another season is underway, and it's featuring the great outdoors, plenty of new teams, an all-star game, and lots of great hockey. The third season of ECHL Week starts right now. Hi, I'm Barry Schickling, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the third season of ECHL Week. We'll cover one-of-a-kind events, impressive accomplishments, and of course, plenty of hockey for you through the end of the season. Plus, we'll chronicle the efforts of 28 teams in their attempts to capture the Kelly Cup Championship. Let's get started. There's little doubt that the highlight of the first half of this ECHL season took place in Toledo, where the Walleye hosted the league's first ever outdoor games as part of its week-long Winterfest. Let's get right to the highlights of Toledo's North Division battle with Kalamazoo. Providing the details for us are Matt Melzak and Scott Pallack on BCSN. They get the first ever ECHL outdoor game underway. Toledo winning the opening faceoff. And the walleye, Kyle Rogers, playing in his first game since November the 28th. Able to get the puck down into the corner. This game underway. We'll see if Toledo can keep the fast starts. Those have been the key all season long for this team and why they are out to such a great record. Off the draw, it's picked up and a shot. They score. Kalamazoo gets the late goal. And it's Bloomstrand who gets it. Ludwig Bloomstrand right off the faceoff, his seventh of the year. And Kalamazoo takes a 1 0 lead. 1940 into the opening period. A quick wrist shot. And Bloomstrand gets the goal. That late goal giving him a 1-0 lead and then a shot, they score! Tyler Barnes ties this game at one. No one has been hotter than Mr. Barnes out on the ice, so why wouldn't he get the first walleye goal at Winterfest? Well, as the fireworks go off, the fireworks were coming from Tyler Barnes. As you mentioned, red hot, but it's a terrific forecheck from Burstback. He was able to corral the puck, and look at Barnes go down. All of Brett Hall on the one, and his right knee, snap it off right by Martin. But credit, first back with a terrific four-check takeaway pass, and Barnes, red hot, finishes it off. We're to that point, Scott, where more than likely the next goal will win this thing. Yeah, just the breakout is really key. Schwenard, great individual effort. A little bit ago to get the puck out, and here Kalamazoo does a good job. First pass out. Yep. Got it to the Toledo line. Caria throws it across, and it'll be drifted down into the Toledo zone. Near side, good check put on there. Bonus will get behind the net. Centering pass in front, they score. Kalamazoo grabs a 2-1 to one lead. Matt Caria gets the goal. Carrier is going to get the goal, but it's going to be a terrific combination along the wall. I think Carrier's did a great effort, and there's the pass out. What a tremendous look, and Carrier makes no mistake. Martin comes out of his net, plays it up the near side. Under 20 seconds left to go. Luciani kept it alive for Toledo. It came right back to him. He'll wind. He fires! And another stop, another chance, kicked aside by Martin, centered in front, and that's blocked. Another try coming to the front of the net, and it squirts free over on the far side. And out to center it goes. Puck knocked into the Toledo end, and the horn sounds. The Toledo walleye falling here to Joel Martin and the Kalamazoo Wings in the first ever game to be played outdoors in the ECHL, 2-1. to one is the final score. The, uh, the, the crowd unbelievably into this game. I can't tell you ice level how loud they were in the last 30 seconds of that game. This morning we just talked about enjoying the moment and uh, you know it's kind of a fresh start for us after the, the Christmas break here so uh, you know 
a fun game, but an important game for us too, and we're happy to come out with two points. We'd be lying to say if it was just like any other game. Uh, obviously, it's a big stage, uh, a lot more fans outdo outdoors. But once you got on the ice for pregame skate this morning and then warm ups, uh, you know it felt like it felt like a regular game. We knew it was at stake. Two points. We needed the two points, and we wanted to start off the second year, the second half of the year on the right foot, and I think we did that. Oh, it, it, Toledo is an is an interesting community. You know that Midwestern culture. Much like Chicago, they, they always feel like, you know, the, the, the city of, uh, you know, the second city. So when we do things like this, uh, meaning Huntington Center, Fifth Third Field in downtown, and now Winterfest, um, the community comes together and is very proud of that. So that, that really, it humbles you, makes you feel fantastic about uh, Toledo, which is now my adopted hometown. And um, so that, that's really the takeaway, is that people feel uh, very positive, great, you know, great feelings about their community, and they come together to celebrate. The following week, the Walleye hosted another outdoor game, again in front of over 11,000 fans at Fifth Third Field. Fort Wayne won that matchup 3-2 in a shootout. The ECHL has 28 teams playing this season. We'll talk with the league commissioner about that next on ECHL Week. Rob Bellamy of the South Carolina Stingrays and you're watching ECHL Week. When the Alaska Aces captured their third Kelly Cup title last June, there were 21 teams in the ECHL. By the time the puck dropped in October for this season, the league roster had grown by seven. An expansion team was granted a year ago to Indianapolis and Las Vegas is sitting out this season trying to find a proper arena. But the big offseason news was the acceptance of the seven active members of the now defunct Central Hockey League, a move that dramatically changes the footprint of AA hockey. Here's ECHL Commissioner Brian McKenna discussing how this expansion came about. We had a busy summer. Uh, we uh, had uh, discussions off and on over the course of the summer and then uh, things died down and then uh, uh, at the end of September we got a call and uh, uh, discussions really began in earnest and the last uh, basically a week or two of negotiations were very busy and then we had once we had an agreement we had three weeks to get all the documentation in place leases transferred uh, any number of uh, different items that we requested of the teams in order to uh, put in place before we could possibly bring it to uh, our Board of Governors for a vote so uh, they did a lot of work in that three-week time period. We finally did get it to our board, uh, had the vote, a positive vote, and uh, again, we're very pleased to, to bring the seven new members uh, into our league. Gives us uh, a national platform, uh, a coast-to-coast -coast league, which really we haven't had in the past, and now gives us, uh, for the first time, really an opportunity to take a look at possibly becoming a 30-team league and uh, being able to align one-on-one -on -one with uh, both American League and uh, National Hockey League. So I think from our perspective, that's an exciting opportunity. You talked about 
about the negotiations leading up to the agreement to bring the old Central League teams into the uh, ECHL. What were the main issues that had to be dealt with, the primary ones? Well, uh, in addition to timing, I mean, uh, they had a league that was already in place that the owners had uh, moved, uh, stepped up last year to actually buy the league from Global Entertainment about a year ago. So that had to be dismantled. Uh, we had to uh, uh, basically have a discussion, negotiation in terms of what fees, what uh, what uh, amount of money would be uh, crossing the table in order for them to come into our league. And then various other, I, I guess, sundry items, Barry, uh, related to insurance related to our collective bargaining agreement. They had a separate agreement in the Central Hockey League uh, previously as well. So many of those other items that had to uh, occur as well. Not to, to, to mention the fact that all of the leases obviously were with Central Hockey League teams. In many cases had to get those transferred so that they could play in our league. Had to make sure that the Players Association was on board with this move as well. So there were a lot of things that had to uh, uh, come in, uh, to, in, into place in a very short period of time. So uh, I will I will say though that the uh, all seven teams coming in from the former Central Hockey League were very cooperative. Front offices uh, certainly uh, did a ton of work to put it all together in a very short period of time so that we could get uh, uh, in, in a position to get it to our board, vote on it uh, before uh, the beginning of our season. In our next show, we'll take a more detailed look at the other new team, the Indy Fuel, and also examine where minor league hockey might be headed in the next few years. This year's Pacific Division has seven members. Only the top four qualify for postseason play, which makes for fierce battles. Here, the Stockton Thunder and Colorado Eagles clash. Kevin McGlue and Ryan Bach handle the announcing duties for us on 107.9 The Bear. 50 seconds left to the five on three. LaRock winds, fires, kick, save, rebound, scores. Seaback able to find that rebound on the doorstep. Carr had sprawled out to make the initial save, and he snapped it upstairs. And Stockton makes good on the five on three, and they take a one nothing lead. If you know, Ryan, you go back, we saw a similar penalty to that that was called on uh, Doug Carr. He went out to make a save, put on his right leg pad. Guy got tripped. They called him for interference and tripping. Quick shot by Moon, tipped in front, shot, score! Greg Gardner deflects it by hole. Colorado has tied the game at one, and Nathan Moon, he'll pick up an assist. And Colorado, not worried about that. Rolls out to neutral. Damatilla after it. Left wing side has a trailer. Bootlet grabs it. Cuts in. Shot. Score! Daryl Bootlet. Top shelf. 2 1. Colorado. 9 38 left in the second. Well, Matt Goal there again leads the hard work in 45. Damatilla as he makes the work along the wall, drawing the defenseman. Send it over. Bowman with it now. Fires it ahead. Cutting in. Bootland cuts in front. Shot. Score! Daryl Bootland back to back goes. 3-1 Eagles. 7.47 left in a second period. Let's well, see those Eagle wings flap here from Daryl Bootland. Wow. And what a nifty little move. Seamack with it. High slot. Over for Bhutan. Top of the near side circle. Put it for Hayes, looking back door, in front, tip, scores. Adam Phillips able to take that puck below the hash marks, deflect it into the back of the net. Kulak with it, ahead for Damatilla once more. Damatilla lofts it up into the air. Bootland gets dumped down as he tried to make his way in. Rolls down the ice, scores! Empty net goal, and a bizarre one at that. And now, LaRock and Bootland are going to go at it. Bootlet, a big left. Right up against the wide side wall. Now the Rock trying to land a couple of rights upstairs on Bootlet. Now Bootlet counters with a left of his own. And the linesman trying to get what's left out there unfurled and pulled apart Ryder and Gavitillo will separate. And it looks like they have successfully separated these two teams. This year's All-Stars and new Hall of Famers. We have a list of both when ECHL Week continues.
Sign up for ECHL TV and watch every ECHL game live online. Follow your favorite teams at home and on the road. With live streaming available on your PC, iPad, and iPhone, you'll never be too far away from the action. Never miss a big goal. Relive your favorite ECHL moments in the video archives and catch every game from around the league live. If ECHL hockey is on, it's on ECHL.tv. how to be more than a bystander. Visit StopBullying.gov. Hi, this is Chris Drieger of the Evansville Iceman, and you can tweet me at Chris Drieger. Uh, too much of a logistical problem. Uh, it's good because the new teams are in, in the certain areas uh, that we can schedule guys into those areas for, for weekend games and make trips out of it uh, for the most part. Um, we've, and we've added some uh, we've added some officials as well with those with adding to the new teams. Twenty-seven players have been selected as All-Stars and alternates to face the Solar Bears on January 21st in this season's ECHL All-Star Classic at the Amway Center in Orlando. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for the All-Stars. Joe Canada of Ontario is among the league leaders in both save percentage and goals against average. Under contract to the Vancouver Canucks of the NHL, Canada allowed two goals or less in seven of his first 12 appearances with the Reign this season. Colin Bowman of Colorado makes his second straight appearance in the ECHL All-Star Game. Among defensemen, Bowman leads the league in goals, is tied at the top of the list with game-winning goals, and is fourth in points. James Martin of Fort Wayne leads all ECHL defensemen in assists and points. He's also the leader in power play assists by a defenseman and is tied for second with 11 power play points. He's tied for fifth in goals among league blue liners. Tyler Barnes of Toledo is the only rookie in the starting lineup. The league's Rookie of the Month for December, Barnes leads first-year players in both assists and points. Under contract with Grand Rapids of the American Hockey League, Barnes is tied for sixth in league scoring. Wheeling's Riley Brace scored 28 points in his first 22 games with the Nailers this season. He scored six of his first nine goals on special teams, including a pair of shorthanded markers. He's currently on loan to Worcester of the AHL, where he's added three points in four games. The final All-Star starter was Allen's Jack Combs, who is tied for the ECHL lead in goals and leads the league in points and power play points. But Combs won't be heading to Orlando. He's left the Americans and accepted an offer to play in Europe for the rest of the season. Here's a look at the reserves and alternates for the All-Star Classic. Every team had one player chosen. The starting lineup was determined in voting by ECHL coaches, team captains, media relations directors, broadcasters, and media members. Any alternate players to be added to the team will be announced a couple days prior to the game. Florida's Greg Poss will serve as head coach for the All-Stars by virtue of his team having the league's top winning percentage through games of December 27th. Steve Martinson of Allen is the assistant coach because the Americans had the best points percentage in the other conference. The 2015 inductees to the ECHL Hall of Fame have been announced. Darren Colborn played 421 games in seven seasons with Dayton, Richmond, Raleigh and Augusta. He ranks fifth in league history with 323 goals and 14th with 567 points. 
Twice he scored 69 goals in a season, third most in ECHL history, and he scored 40 or more goals four times. Louis Dumont is the ECHL's all-time leader with 566 assists and 891 points and is tied for third with 325 goals. He made his pro debut with Tallahassee and Wheeling in 1994-95 and went on to play 12 seasons in the league. Dumont won the ECHL scoring title with Pensacola in 2001-2, recording 102 points. Scott Sabatino worked in the ECHL League office from 1995 through 2006, serving as the league's executive vice president and chief operating officer for the final six seasons of his tenure. Today, he's the vice president of finance for the San Francisco 49ers of the NFL. Carl Shear was an ECHL team executive for more than 20 years. He joined the league in 1993 when the Charlotte Checkers joined the ECHL. The team drew over 8,100 fans per game in its first season. Shear also served as the chairman of the ECHL Board of Governors for several seasons in the 1990s. All four men will be formally inducted as the eighth class of the ECHL Hall of Fame at a ceremony in Orlando on January 21st. We talk to the man who's played more ECHL games than anyone. That's coming up on ECHL Week. This job looks perfect. It says you need a high school diploma. You've got one of those, right? Skip the drama. Get your diploma. I got that. Find free adult education classes at finishyourdiploma.org. Are you paying too much with your current payroll company? Are you concerned about how Obamacare could affect your business? If you're interested in a better, more cost-effective solution, Einstein HR is the answer. No more stressing out about Obamacare and the new regulations. No more worrying about being in compliance. No more overpriced payroll services. Let Einstein HR get you back to the business of doing business instead of spending needless hours and frustration taking care of details that add nothing to your bottom line. We provide a first-class payroll and HR services with superior customer service. Call Einstein HR today. Hi, this is Mike Duco of the Indy Fuel, and you're watching ECHL Week. The Gwinnett Gladiators were the first team to make a coaching change this season, promoting former captain Andy Brandt from assistant to interim head coach last month, replacing Rick Emmett. However, the Glads are going to have to earn lots of wins in the second half to avoid missing the playoffs in back-to-back -back seasons. Let's see how they fare against East Division opponent South Carolina. Nick Bovey has the play-by-play -play on WDUN. Puck is out at center. Piero Zabatel has some space out in front of him. He's going to take it. Has Bergstresser going to feed him? Bergstresser shoots. He scores! The first short-handed goal for the Gladiators this season. Carey near side half board. Steps up. Passes down low. Everson back up top. Stasekel. Far side point. This is Melindy. Back up top. Stasekel. On the line. Shooting. They score! A power play goal. Chasing it down is McDonald. As Stevenson wants to go, he's going to go with Perrier. They have themselves in a lock. Stevenson giving rights in. Perrier has his right free. Perrier gets his right over the top, and Stevenson counters. Stevenson has a good grip on Perrier. Both combatants still have their helmets on. Stevenson trying to reach over the top. Now has his left free. Gets his right some more in. Tries to rip off the helmet. Gets a nice round of applause as he's held up against the boards. Now Stevenson finally gets the helmet free and gets more rights in. Some pops from Stevenson in on Perrier. That'll come out near side. Sylvester chips it up to Herbert. Herbert entering the zone. Only one defenseman back. Herbert backhand shot. And they score as Brown made the save, but he fell into the net, and that's going to count as a goal. So South Carolina gets one back. Labardo whips one in on Jakaitis. He'll block it back behind. And Blazic will play it up to the near side half boards where Everson was waiting. Everson passes back up top of the zone. Stasekel, slap shot, they score! Bar down. A power play goal number two of the evening. Joe Stasekel makes it 3-1. to one. 
Entering the zone, it's Herbert. Rounding the corner, coming in on net. Brown with a fantastic save. He didn't have an eye on it. Now Herbert whiffs on the shot. They score from the slot. There was way too much going on in front of Adam Brown, and he wasn't able to get an eye on it. And it is 3-2. 30 seconds left in four on four. And no doubt they'll definitely turn things up here. Third period has generally been their best period as of late. Now an opportunity right out front. They score! There you go! <laughs> what was I just saying? My goodness. Piero Zabatel has the pass from the half boards. Tipped in on Jakaitis. And wow! Gary Nunn tipped that on the backhand blindly. Pim will clear it himself. Holding onto it at the center ice stripe. Tries to whip it, fakes out the defense, still holding on to it, and now he'll bring it up ahead. One on two against him, shoots when he scores, a short-handed goal. The Gladiators will take this one, four to three, your final. Two power play goals, a short-handed goal, and a perfect four for four penalty kill. For as long as hockey fans talk about the ECHL, Sam Fatorik's name will be remembered. Now the all-time leader in games played, the 40-year-old Fatorik first appeared in the league in 1998. He'll soon pass the 800-game level, a record unlikely to be broken. We spoke with Kalamazoo's Fatorik about his achievement. It's nothing I ever set out to do. Um, you know, I played hockey because I loved it, um, and I was blessed to be able to, to continue playing. Um, I'm just lucky to be able to, to play and stay healthy for this long and, and to have, you know, contributed to teams so they want me to stick around. So so for me, it's not so much a personal thing. It's, you know, I've had a lot of good teams, a lot of good coaches, you know, and it's the best sport in the world, played by the best people in sports. Um, I'm just happy to be part of that fraternity. So it's, uh, it's just one of those things where I didn't know it meant so much until there was a lot of hoopla about it. And, uh, you know, now it's kind of an honor to, to be, you know, to be there by myself. You know, I passed Brownie, who I played with for a little bit and played against for a long time. And, uh, you know, he's a great guy. I've talked to him a bunch and it's, uh, you know, it's just, it's an honor. It's great to have my kids watch me play. Um, you know, my youngest is two and he's going to remember it. Um, you know, if I had retired a couple years ago, he wouldn't, wouldn't have seen me play. And if I retired last year, he wouldn't have remembered it. So it's, for me, that's, that's huge. I mean, you know, family's huge for us. And, uh, you know, obviously, like you said, having everyone here is great. Um, you know, so yeah, when it's, when it's all said and done and I'm, I'm retired and whatever I'm doing, I'll be able to look back and, and uh, they'll be able to look back and remember fondly what was, what was going on at the time. So it's, uh, it'll hit me later. It's kind of, it creeps in every once in a while and it's, it's really kind of a cool thing. Um, but yeah, right now, like I said, we have a job to do um, for the rest of the season. It's, it's not about one game or one record. It's about winning the Kelly Cup. And, um, you know, that's what, we're, that's what we're here to try and do. For those of you who were unable to enjoy any of the Winterfest activities in Toledo, we've got a treat for you. The entire first outdoor game in league history in one minute. We follow that with some of the sights and sounds of Winterfest. Enjoy. <music>
wraps up today's edition of ECHL Week. Make sure to join us for our next show coming in February. Plus, stay up to date with what's going on in the league by following us on Twitter and Facebook. Until next time, thanks for watching and make sure to make every week an ECHL Week.